Hello, I am lead meteorologist Thomas Wasula, and I will be giving the part four section of the spring sky warrant spotter session from the National Weather Service at Albany, further covering thunderstorms, damaging winds, and tornadoes. Damaging winds, how do they occur? Step one with a severe thunderstorm involves updrafts, strong updrafts create a tall cumulonimbus clouds. Step two, you have the mature stage where you have updrafts and downdrafts side by side. Those downdrafts begin to mix down from aloft in the step two. Step three, you see a downdraft dominant and you see the strong winds with a line of thunderstorms or a cold front. Now we will review a video covering damaging winds. <laughs> Damaging winds can impact many areas of our forecast area. Here are some examples of what wind damage can do be from these types of thunderstorms. Straight line winds can snap trees a several feet above the ground or even the vicinity ground. In this picture here, you see a tree snap a couple feet above its, its, its trunk. On the right, you see trees toppled into power lines, into homes, and winds of 60 miles per hour grade tearing off parts of siding or shingles. On the right is a line of very strong thunderstorms that produce widespread damaging winds from May 4th, 2018. Microburst versus macroburst. A microburst is a small downburst with an outflow less than two and a half miles in horizontal diameter and lasts for up to 10 minutes. Despite their small size, microbursts can produce destructive winds in excess of 100 miles per hour. Macrobursts are larger downbursts with a horizontal extent more than two and a half miles in diameter and last up to 20 minutes. A macroburst is typically not quite as strong as a microburst, but still can produce destructive winds leading to tornado-like damage. Here is a video from one of our spotters showing a microburst near Castleton, New York on, on this particular date. You can see the microburst coming out toward the end of the video here, right there. And that's with the heavy precipitation falling. A derecho is a widespread long-lived windstorm made up of rapidly moving thunderstorms, 
Often they can cover hundreds of miles and last multiple hours. The super derecho occurred on July 15, 1995, where millions of trees were knocked down in the Adirondack Park. More recently, on October 7, 2020, a rare cool season derecho occurred across upstate New York into New England. By definition, if the wind damage swath expends, extends more than 240 miles and includes wind gusts of at least 58 miles per hour or greater along most of its length, then the event may be classified as a derecho. On October 7, 2020, there were up to 100 plus wind damage reports with a few isolated tornadoes that occurred on that day. On this particular slide, we're gonna go over what a tornado is and how they form. The first thing to discuss is what a funnel cloud is versus a tornado. A funnel cloud is not touching the ground and it must be rotating. In this case, you do not see the condensation funnel touching the ground. A tornado completely touches the ground, the funnel. It must be rotating and you see debris visible near the ground. The tornado is also in contact with the ground. Funnel clouds do not make contact from the ground. Here is a short video which goes over what causes a tornado. What causes a tornado? The swirling funnel-shaped winds of a tornado are easily recognizable and they can be very dangerous. But what causes these unique and violent weather phenomena? Tornadoes usually begin with a thunderstorm but not just any thunderstorm, a specific kind of rotating thunderstorm called a supercell. They can bring damaging hail, strong winds, lightning, and flash floods. Supercells form when air becomes very unstable and wind speed and direction are different at different altitudes. This condition is called wind shear. Wind shear is common in the formation of most thunderstorms. When wind at ground level is blowing in one direction and wind higher up in the atmosphere blows in a different direction, it can cause a horizontal tube of air to form. In a thunderstorm, warm air rises up within the storm. This is called an updraft. An updraft can turn a horizontal rotating tube of air into a vertical one. When this happens, the whole storm begins rotating creating a supercell. Some supercells form a funnel cloud. And if that funnel cloud extends to the ground, it's called a tornado. Tornadoes can produce winds up to 300 miles per hour at the surface, making them dangerous to people and property. As a tornado moves along the ground, its strong winds begin to pick up debris too. In fact, Flying debris is usually what causes the most damage in a storm. Thankfully, meteorologists are keeping an eye on your local weather. They will try to give you a heads up if a tornado is likely to form in your area. They combine wind and temperature readings from the ground with information from satellites to determine if your local weather has the right conditions for a tornado. For example, NOAA's GOES East satellite captured this video of an isolated supercell storm in Texas. The different colors represent different cloud top temperatures in the storm. Colder temperatures represent higher cloud tops, which often means stronger storms. So, if you see a tornado watch or warning in your area, look for updates and get to safety as soon as possible and know that NOAA's GOZAR series satellites will still be keeping a close eye on things from orbit. Find out more about extreme weather at NOAA SciJinx. So let's go over some tornado terminology. The first term to be defined is a tornado watch. A tornado watch means weather conditions could lead to the formation of severe storms and tornadoes. It means that the conditions are favorable and it's possible. So someone should be prepared, know your safe location, be ready to act quickly if a warning is issued or you suspect a tornado is approaching. A tornado warning means 
A tornado has been spotted or indicated by weather radar, meaning a tornado is occurring or expected to occur soon. Take action immediately. There is imminent danger to life and property. Immediately seek refuge in the late safest location possible. In most cases, this will be your basement or an interior room like your bathroom. A tornado emergency is an extreme situation. It's an exceedingly rare situation with a severe threat to human life and catastrophic damage due to a confirmed violent tornado will, may occur. Take action immediately. There is an imminent danger to life and property. Immediately seek refuge in the safest location possible. Tornadoes get rated after a storm survey is completed. The damage is used to come up with the winds, and the Fujita scale is shown here on the left side of the screen. Let us go over some safety related to tornadoes. First, how are tornadoes officially confirmed? The National Weather Service does a science survey to assess the damage. The Weather Service meteorologists gather damage info from emergency managers, storm spotters, and the public. If you have any pictures or videos, always share those with the National Weather Service. Two, the plan of a storm survey. This is the science survey. Using the information gathered, National Weather Service meteorologists decide which locations to send storm survey teams. The number of teams depends on the extent of damage reports. Usually more than, no more than three teams per day are sent out. The third part is conducting the storm survey. The National Weather Service meteorologists travel to impacted areas to assess the damage. Preliminary conclusions can be made about the type and severity of storms using damage indicators. The final part of the storm survey is reporting your conclusions. Once back at the office, National Weather Service meteorologists will assess the data, consult experts, then write summaries and reports of the findings and tornado ratings. This can take hours to days. Let us further go over more detailed tornado safety of what to do and what not to do. The most important thing to do is to get off the road if you're in a car. The best option is to drive to a designated shelter, basement, or safe room. The next best option is a small windowless room or hallway on the lowest floor of a sturdy building. In many cases, this is a bathroom. This is what not to do. Do not seek refuge in a vehicle outside or under an overpass. A highway overpass does not provide safety from a tornado. Also, do not seek shelter under an overpass or a tree. This puts you at greater risk of being killed or seriously injured by flying debris from the powerful tornadic winds. Here is a chart going over your worst options to your best options. What's on the red are your worst options, and this is in terms of tornado, tornado sheltering guidelines. The worst options are being in vehicles, underneath the highway overpass, or mobile homes. Many injuries and fatalities occur in mobile homes. The bad options, still on this orange side or red side, are large open rooms like gymnasiums or manufactured housing. As we shift to the right, good options are an interior room of a well-constructed home or building or a basement, and this is the most common option taken by people. The best options are above or below ground storm shelters for tornadoes. They're called tornado storm shelters. They're NSA ICC 500 compliant and are specifically designed FEMA safe rooms that are in FEMA shelters. These are very helpful tornado guidelines to help for safety that can be used for survival. Let us now go over a brief tornado climatology for the National Weather Service at Albany County Warning Area from 1980 to 2023. This is roughly 44 years of a tornado climatology. You can see from the leftmost chart that the number of tornadoes per year from 1980 to 2023 and the National Weather Service at Albany County Warning Area varies quite a bit. A total of 224 tornadoes have occurred 
This equates to about two to three per year across Eastern New York and Western New England. A record number occurred in 2020 with 14 in the Albany forecast area. If you look at how many per month, the majority occur in the late spring and summer. The most occur in July typically, but also a fair amount in May and August. This doesn't mean you can't have them in June. It's just looking over this 44 year time frame. It's been heavy in May, June, and July. They also are still possible in the cool season, especially in the shoulder season of the fall. If you look by intensity, most of tornadoes in the National Weather Service at Albany forecast area occur in the late spring and summer and are generally on the lower end of the Fuchita scale, of the enhanced Fuchita scale. They are typically EF0 with 65 to 85 mile per hour winds or EF1 as 86 to 110 mile per hour winds. 88% have occurred in this particular category of the enhanced Fujita scale. When you look at the tornado tracks, they do vary in length and intensity when you look at the complete climatology from 1950 to 2022. The long track tornadoes are typically shown with an EF2 or greater rating. You can see in particular that there was an EF3 many years ago that went from north, northwest to south, southeast across the forecast area. You can also see the long track one from 1989 that went from Montgomery County and Schoharie County through Albany into Greene County. Tornadoes are more common near the major valleys of the Mohawk River Valley and the Hudson River Valley. This doesn't mean you cannot have them over higher terrain, it's just they are a bit more common. This concludes the severe wind and tornado track portion of the spring 2024 National Weather Service at Albany Skywarn session.